Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today, we're gonna to compare the CR10S to the new CR10S Pro. Right off the bat, I'm gonna address the obvious. This is not a stock CR10S. We did a Titan Aero extruder upgrade on this in a previous video. Feel free to check that out. I'm using this printer uh, to demonstrate every component of it and compare other than the hot end assembly. I'll use a CR10S4, which uses the same stock hot end assembly as the CR10S uh, when it comes to comparing that component. Having said that, the first obvious difference between these two printers is the lack of the box. So the box is now completely integrated into the base unit. Speaking of the box, the previous box was a monochrome screen with a rotary encoder. It took a micro SD card in the side and a mini USB if you wanted to hook it up directly to your computer. Um, now they're using a color touch screen that also has, uh, it can make jingles instead of just beeps. So there's some changes and improvements there. In some cases, it is nice to have the rotary encoder, um, but I also like being able to select the, temp the temperature right from like a dial pad on the screen instead of having to scroll up to 220 degrees or whatever I'm running. Inside the boxes, this has your standard Creality version two board. Um, and if you've had a CR10, you know that you can hear them kind of make the music, if you will, as they move around. And the new CR10S Pro is using the Trinamic drivers. I'm not exactly sure which model it is. It might be 2208s, um, but they are 256 micro steps. They are silent, silky smooth and silent. It's using a Creality board and the drivers are integrated into the board. They're not using the stepper stick drivers. Um, but that is a very welcome improvement. This thing is darn near silent. And in keeping with that silence, they've spent some extra effort on the fans that they've chosen. And the power supply is a meanwhile power supply in all of these as well, which they're known for their quality. Um, they've also decided to use the Ender 3 uh, spool holder, uh, which is just a little bit different than the CR10 slant one they were using. Makes no difference to me. So let's move on to some of the other components. At the front, we used to have the tensioner for the Y-axis. The Y-axis was running on a 2040 rail here. The Y-axis rails are now two 2020s. So they're split side to side instead of one down the middle. So that should provide better bed stability. And there's two wheels on either side of each of these rails for a total of four wheels instead of the six on this one. Um, and on each side of the outer side of both rails. Those are where the eccentric nuts are on those wheels. So that's where you adjust the tension for the bed to make sure that this is making good contact with the rails the whole way along. On this one, there were three eccentric nuts on the one side that you would adjust to put that pressure on the middle rail. The belt path is uh, instead of coming up over the top like that and running through the middle of that extrusion, uh, the belt is tipped 90 degrees. So now it runs this way and since you no longer have a tensioner at the front, you would need to tension the belt uh, by shifting the motor at the back. We'll look at that in a little more detail later on. So the obvious format differences aside, we will probably move on to the hot end. So both the units are Bowden drive. I've used my stand-in CR10S4 here. It has the same hot end assembly. So they're both Bowden systems. The extruder is on a little bracket on the right hand side here. And the hot end runs on the 2020 uh, rail, the X carriage here, has three wheels, two on top, one on the bottom. And the one on the bottom has the eccentric nut for making sure that that is nice and secure against the rail. There's no wobble or slack there. There's a odd size fan. I wanna say it's a 4010, it's very thin, definitely 10. Uh, that is for your hot end cooling fan. It has this little redirection duct on the bottom. Um, it, it works well enough. There's definitely room for improvement uh, and they've done that on the CR10S Pro. It uses a 4010 fan for the hot end cooling fan that cools the aluminum heatsink uh, to keep the cool side of the hot end cold. Uh, let's take this cover off and just take a look at that uh, hot end assembly. So with the fan shroud off and both the cooling fans still attached to that, we have the cold side of the hot end 
So it's an MK8 uh, hot end assembly. So you've got the heater block, you've got the pinch type thermistor, the heater cartridge obviously, the nozzle under here, and you've got the Kapton tape holding on like a cotton thermal insulation pad there and two bolts running straight through the, the heat sink and mounting it onto this X carriage here. The heat sink doesn't have very deep grooves or very many of them. Um, so there's, I, I couldn't possibly see there being a lot of airflow uh, past those fins from the 4010 fan. Uh, it seems to do a good enough job though, obviously, otherwise we'd have constant jamming. Um, but they've made quite a few changes to this assembly as we'll see when we open the CR10S Pro. So over on the CR10S Pro, uh, it clearly looks quite a bit different than the, the older model. So on the side, they have a significantly beefed up or improved cooling fan for the part cooling fan. It's a 4020 radial fan, which has a much th higher static pressure rating than an axial fan would. So it's the proper type of fan to use, in my opinion, along with, in this case, it's a 3D printed, but a greatly improved uh, cooling fan duct or shroud to deflect the the air around the nozzle and onto the part. It's still Bowden, and in this case, they have used Capricorn XS tubing, which is uh, a welcome improvement. And they have auto bed leveling. In this case, they're using a capacitive probe. They're using capacitive because inductive doesn't work at all on glass and works pretty poorly on an aluminum surface. They're designed to uh, sense ferrous metals, you know, steel, for example. Uh, they do work, but the sensing distance is greatly reduced. So a capacitive sensor is nice to see there. And then all of that leads up here to the extruder assembly that we'll cover in just a couple minutes. So with that said, I'm gonna pull this uh, fan shroud off and we're gonna take a look at the hot end assembly itself. So before I go too much further, I wanna cover the same points I made over there. The X carriage is almost the same. I mean, it's clearly a much beefier bracket. It's much wider. It's got this little ledge along the top but from a, like a mechanic standpoint, it still has two wheels on top of the 2020 with one on the bottom in the center with an eccentric nut on the bottom one to apply pressure to the rail. Um, but we see a large departure here with the, the hot end assembly itself. So on the cold side, we have, it looks kind of like a V6, kind of like the mounting pattern that we saw on the MK8 over there. Uh, so you, it's fully bolted straight through here into the back of the uh, X carriage. And the cooling fins, not only are they thinner, but there's a lot more space in between them. Um, and they're rounded much like a V6 is. And I believe it actually takes the same uh, nozzles as a V6, but they're a shorter thread length by just a little bit. Um, so that's a little bit confusing because you would think it would fit and then your nozzle will be sticking too far out the block. So that's something to be aware of. Um, another change that we see is that they're including a thermal sock, so your silicone sock, like we've seen on E3D products for quite a while. That's nice. Uh, if you've ever had to replace the Kapton tape and that cotton pad, uh, that's a miserable experience. Replacing a thermal sock, a silicone sock like this is a lot easier. And they're pretty uh, stick resistant, if you will, like filament doesn't really stick to them. They're still using the uh, pinch type thermistor and uh, your standard heater cartridge on the side. The CR10 S Pro here is all 24 volt now. So unlike the previous models, which were all 12, we're running 24 volt on everything here, 24 volt bed and on the hot end. So that's probably all I need to cover there. We'll uh, bolt that back on and then we'll make our way up here to the extruder assembly on both. So back on the CR10, the extruder mechanism at the back here, uh, the first thing that we notice is we have a filament runout sensor on the side. And this filament runout sensor is just kind of friction fit onto this plate here. So it never seemed like a, a, a very good uh, way of installing this. Uh, it seemed kind of like an afterthought um, to just have that friction fit. And I've personally had these have false positives, uh, these mechanical switch-based filament runout sensors. Um, I don't personally use one, but I would like to see this, you know, fastened uh, in some way. And there are some brackets that you can print that, that do bolt on here. But we'll remove that just for ease of demonstration here. The feeder itself is a single brass toothed gear hobbed bolt, whatever you want to call it. It's got pretty shallow um, teeth grooves in it. 
uh, and it's only pushing from the one side of the filament. So on the back side here, there's just an idler pulley uh, that kind of guides the filament through the filament path there. And in this case, it's all plastic. So all of the, uh, the bracket here is just plastic. They've flip-flopped between plastic and aluminum and now they're back to plastic. I don't have a huge preference one way or the other. Um, but one thing that I think I mentioned in a previous video is you can end up with a, a groove in the inlet of this uh, lever arm here where the filament gets kind of snagged in there over time. Um, so I, I like to put a PTFE tube in there. Um, the aluminum is a lot more resistant to, to that kind of abrasion over time. Um, but this is a kind of standard um, extruder uh, assembly that we have seen across the Ender 3, the CR10S and that entire series. Um, they've made a major departure from that in the CR10S Pro, so let's compare. So here is probably one of the largest departures that we see on the CR10S Pro versus the CR10S. The entire extruder assembly here, including the cable, is completely different than what we've seen on their previous models. Uh, the cable we saw first on the CRX, the dual color uh, printer. But it is reminiscent of a uh, Bontech uh, drive gear system. So there are two gears uh, that are toothed at the bottom so that they're kept in sync with each other. And they, the hob bolt portion of them feeds the filament in from either side at the same time. So you're getting a lot more force on the filament, uh, pushing it forward, and you're getting a good positive grip. Uh, so they're back to the aluminum lever assembly. So everything here is aluminum, this entire bracket, all of these components. And the filament path from the moment it enters this lever to the moment it goes into here is rather constrained. There's very little opportunity for something like a flexible filament, say a TPE, to, uh, to kind of bind and buckle as it's fed through here, uh, which, is, which is definitely a, a nice improvement as well. And one of my major complaints, that filament runout sensor being an afterthought and just friction fit, that's completely resolved here. It's in an aluminum enclosure and it's bolted to this bracket. So that's going nowhere anymore. Um, and being aluminum, I hope that it's more abrasion resistant than I've seen on the inlet for the plastic ones. Um, but I'm, I'm very excited to see this. Uh, it's also nice that we now have easy um, pressure adjustment for the spring here. We can adjust this screw to increase the amount of tension that's put on there, but it's preloaded pretty well from the factory. Um, and then of course it goes into the Capricorn tube from there. So onto the back of the printer. Back of the box, so we have these aircraft connectors and this pile of cables that goes to all the components on the printer. Um, we have the Y-axis stepper motor uh, and the belt that goes kind of over the top, has a path over the top. We have the dual Z-axis lead screws, one on either side. Um, this is something that we've seen for a long time, so there's nothing really remarkable here. We also have the uh, strain relief for the bed uh, cable uh, coming out the back. And you need to make sure that you leave enough clearance at the back so that you're not ramming that into a wall or something when it retracts all the way. And let's see how that compares. On the back of the CR-10S Pro, we have the power inlet and the on-off switch and we have the Y-axis motor that instead of sticking out the back is actually inside the case here. And to fit that inside the case, that's the reason they changed the orientation of the belt 90 degrees. Um, and to increase the tension on this belt, this is the uh, motor that you would loosen the screws on and slide back. You'd have to open the bottom of the case to, to put pressure on it backwards, but that, that would be how you control the Y-axis uh, belt tension. Um, we don't see the mess of cables, thanks to the integrated base with all the electronics in it. We still have the uh, strain relief on the bed cable here, and it still protrudes a little bit back from the back of the machine, so you're still gonna have to leave that clearance. Um, nothing else probably remarkable back here. They both have the standard mechanical limit switch on the back, and we'll flip them around. We'll talk about the changes to the bed surfaces themselves, and then do a wrap up. So on the CR-10S, the bed is a three millimeter thick glass plate on top of a aluminum bed and it's held on there with these binder clips. Um, other than that, there's no build surface. So the build surface is just glass. Some people like that. You could put your bonding agent, whether it be glue stick or whatever, on top of that if you feel the need. Or you could always laminate another uh, build tack type surface on top of that. Um, but this is something that we've also seen for a long time. So on the CR-10S Pro, uh, we still have the aluminum 
build plate. Obviously it's 24 volts instead of 12 now, like I mentioned, three millimeter glass on top of that. And on top of that three millimeter glass, they have bonded this, um, it's kind of like a build tack material. It's very similar to the material that we've seen on the Ender 3 for a while. Um, and things bond to it extremely well. We even have some residue here from previous prints. Um, the one thing I'm a little bit concerned about is the replacement of this is going to be a lot more work than if it was a kind of a separate thing that you put on or off. They, you know, they had the magnetic build surface with the Ender 3, so that's kind of easy replacement. Um, so that'll be a bit of a chore, but it's, uh, it's, this unit here is perfectly flat. It's a nice unit and we have absolutely no adhesion problems, that's for sure. Um, they've changed the way that they've attached the glass onto the aluminum uh, build plate. They've used these clips that we saw originally on the CRX um, that are very low profile. They swing out from the front and then you would slide the glass out from the back. The back ones are stationary. Um, so that's nice because you don't need to leave as much clearance along the front. If you're doing a purge line across the front, you don't have to worry as much uh, about leaving, say, a 10 millimeter or so uh, clearance so that you don't hit the binder clips. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that they're including that in this model like they did on the CRX. Um, but other than that, uh, it would be very much the same as what we've seen on previous models. So just to recap, my favorite improvements in the CR-10S Pro, aside from being 24 volts and everything that that provides, is the extruder assembly and the Bontex style dual-sided gearing uh, for pulling the extruder or pushing the uh, filament through the extruder. Uh, that is a very welcome upgrade, as well as the mounting bracket for the filament runout sensor. So those are kind of two of my biggest complaints uh, on the Bowden setups of the past. I really liked how the auto bed leveling worked. Uh, we opened up the printer out of the box, did nothing to the bed whatsoever, and really put it through the paces. And it was exactly 0.2 millimeters with the feeler gauge the whole way across the bed after we did an auto bed leveling sequence. So especially for newcomers, that's really going to simplify the bed leveling process that some people struggle with. Um, the hot end itself, I haven't had enough time with the printer to determine if that is an improvement. Like I said, I do like the silicone sock, that's nice. Um, but it does turn out fantastic prints. I would say they're completely on par with my Ender 3. If not, I'd give the edge to the CR-10S Pro. Um, and the silence. Having a printer that doesn't make any noise where you have to actually look at it to see if it's running is eerie at first, but it's really a nice welcome surprise and one of the reasons I'm a big fan of Trinamic drivers in general. So hopefully those comparisons were, were helpful to you to make your decision. Remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more videos. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.